I'm going to uh, share uh, knowledge on uh, TWS OPC tool. And as you all know, like uh, OPC is also a mainframe batch uh, scheduling and monitoring tool, just like the other tools, Control M and CS7, etc. And uh, this tool was um, created by a company. I'm not sure who later on it was purchased by IBM. I think now it is um, owned by HCL. Uh, let me share my screen. Um, I've prepared a simple kind of uh, Word document so that it will be easier for you guys to okay i hope i'm audible yes sir okay. yes sir okay like uh, unlike the other tools uh, control m and ca7 opc is like completely panel based like for each and every specific function, you will have to be in a specific panel. For example, um, for adding a job into a daily plan, you need to be in a particular plan panel. For um, um, checking uh, jobs and applications in a database, you need to be in a specific panel. So like it's completely panel. You need to know which panel is used for what. Uh, that should be the like basic of learning. And from there we can go in depth of like what are the other available uh, options in that particular panel. Uh, just I'll uh, give you the overview of this tool and what are all the functions it can be uh, we can perform using the tool. And I'll also share a PDF um, kind of a red book kind of document and which will give you in-depth knowledge about the tools if you want to uh, enhance your uh, knowledge on it. Like if you see like uh, OPC stands for operations planning and control. It's also called as TWS, um, Tivoli Workflow Scheduler. And uh, it is like a batch tool which um, automates the job runs and like also controls ah. the flow. Ah. Um, okay. Um, there are few um, keywords you need to know for OPC, like kind of long term plan daily plan current plan database etc etc like um let's start with the ispf like everyone knows what this ispf panel is like it is the starting panel of a mainframe screen and to if you have opc installed in your system you need to uh, use this option o to enter into the OPC panel. This will be the basic uh, OPC panel from where you can go to different uh, options. Each options, as I said earlier, will take you to a different panel from where you can do certain kind of specific uh, activities. For example, like um, option two is called uh, LTP. LTP stands for long term plan and this long term plan is nothing but um, combination of uh, options and settings and like a, um, what to say um, forecast of the jobs which is going to run for the next um, like a particular period of time for example in a particular project it can be like uh, for next two weeks or it can be like next to one month or it can be like up to six months to one year but uh, usually they'll keep it like uh, the long-term plan uh, will be um, 
made to uh, forecast only the next uh, two weeks to one month so that um, there won't be much burden to the system and there is something called current plan current plan is also kind of long-term plan but it will show you the jobs running for the next 24 hours only it is also known as a daily plan so whatever uh, applications and jobs scheduled for the next uh, 14 days or to one month in LTP from that LTP current plan gets the data and it will uh, show you the uh, jobs and applications which are about to run for the next 24 hours it is like a mini version of a long-term plan and current plan is the place where you can do all the changes like um it's kind of online uh, i hope you are all aware of what is online and what is uh, batch uh, current plan is like a place where you can do modifications for that instance like for if you want to cancel a job if you want to uh, hold a particular job which is about to run in uh, next two minutes if you have to uh, delete uh, application if you want to complete an application i'll tell you what are all the difference between holding deleting completing for all those who doesn't know about this uh, in the future uh, like in the next few minutes so like uh, now we've seen what is a long-term plan and a current plan this is a function within a current plan like if you have this uh, submission turned on in a current plan whatever jobs which are scheduled as per a time or a file or a um, job dependent it will get submitted automatically when the dependency gets resolved like usually the current plan jobs will be um, categorized in these three dependencies only either it will be time dependent or it will be file dependent or it will be job dependent um, if you see this it says about the dependencies and job priorities specific time resources all these three dependencies will be uh, categorized here um, if you see uh, when i say it is a file dependent like there will be uh, files coming in and out of mainframe so like if you want a job to process a particular file and you want that job to run only when the file comes enters into the mainframe then you need to use the setup file dependent and that is called in opc as ett external uh, triggering uh, external uh, track trigger I, i'm not sure of the full form um, so whenever there is a file coming into the mainframe let's say from a unique source or a windows source or anywhere else from an outer system uh, mainframe de will detect that file files presence once it enters into the mainframe and uh, sorry opc will detect the files presence once it enters into the mainframe and it will trigger the application which is supposed to run which is which will process the file which has uh, entered into the mainframe so that is the use of an ett application in opc and from uh, current plan like sorry from uh, opc if you use this option database from option one you will have these sub menus like uh, workstation calendar period application id operator instruction special resource ett job description and jcl variables uh, the most common stuffs used here will be like application description uh, calendars and the operator instructions let's go further into that like 
uh, we can also see what is like a workstation. A workstation is like um, um, kind of um, um, segregations. For example, if you have a multiple helper in your uh, system, you want a particular set of jobs to run in a particular helper. You can categorize like you can uh, categorize those applications to run in a particular helper with the help of a workstation. For example, uh, LPAR1, we can have a workstation named LPA1 and LPAR2, LPA2. So if you have this categorization, you don't have to be like available when the job executes. When it is configured to run in a particular workstation, it will automatically run, take that workstation and run it so that uh, the job run uh, can be like um, diverged as per your convenience and calendar periods are used to uh, set um, holidays and working days free days this is also kind of automation stuff if you have uh, created a particular calendars for which a job should run like um, a particular job should run only on work day and it should run only on a Saturday or it should not run during uh, holidays example bank holidays or uh, uh, government holidays you can have a specific calendar created for that particular application or you can have a big calendar created for the entire set of applications or groups or jobs and you can also um, have run cycles created within the calendar so that a particular job will use a particular set of rules in a calendar i'll, I'll tell you uh, how it works with the examples below okay um, Actually, uh, this should be option one database. And if you go to option four, it will take you to this particular page. This is called application description page where you can browse in option one, you can browse whatever applications available inside the database. Database is the main source where you load an application or delete an application from database opc picks uh, the contents and its schedule and loads it into long-term plan and from long-term plan it goes to current plan uh like hello it's uh, like too quiet am i uh, is it understandable am i audible yes yes you are uh, okay okay like stop me wherever you want if you have any questions uh, stop me uh, so we can proceed where how it goes as you can see in the screenshot this is the browse menu and there is some sample job application men mentioned with the masking character wildcard okay star it will show all the jobs which are starting with this characters within the database so there are kindly uh, currently um, around six application IDs which are starting with this character. And yeah, here you can see uh, the valid from date from when this application has been um, um, what to say loaded into the database. That is for our reference. We need those details when we work in OPC like little in depth. Okay. And T stands for type of the application. So an application can be an application or it can be a group. Um, application will have set of jobs in it. Jobs or we call it occurrence in OPC. And groups will have set of job uh, applications in it. Like it's like kind of a file and folder setup in Windows. Uh, jobs are like files and uh, 
applications are kind of folders and you can call uh, groups like um, partitions of hard disk and s yes stands for um, status like you can have an application in active state either in active state or in pending state mm. if you have made an application pending uh, those applications will not be considered by OPC. It will not be added into LTP. It will not be um, uh, like added into the current plan as well. Like you cannot manually add it. It will not be automatically scheduled. It is kind of a dummy. You cannot use that application as long as its status is pending. But if it is an active application, OPC will consider it and you can add it manually directly in the current plan. You can add it manually in the long term plan. If there is a run cycle calendar setup and if it is scheduled, OPC will also add it into the LTP and current plan as per the automation step. Okay, and owner ID like owner ID is a kind of um, um, keyword we used to provide while creating an application so that we can know who has created it or if you have to filter a particular application let's say like eiw is the owner id for this six uh, ad's in the browse menu if you give here the eiw whatever applications have been created with this owner id will be displayed here that is the function of owner ID and there are other stuffs by which you can do filtering most of the OPC panel will have the first page as filtering and when you go inside you can do the functions okay so now we are uh, like browsing in particular application let's say like the second application so this is the page when you, uh, you will get when you browse an application it will show the application name type uh, owner ID can, I'm sorry. Uh, can you just zoom in the page Z zoom in okay here yeah is it visible now yes, yes. better okay um yeah this is the page where you will uh, where opc will take you when you browse an application like uh, select s to browse an application and here it will show you the application name type owner id priority valid from and valid to date authority group status run cycles operations and uh, predecessors this will be the page where uh, you will see all this and operations are nothing but occurrences or jobs there are eight operations in this application there is one external predecessor and this is valid from uh, the year 2025 and till uh, this is the default date for the end of and uh, 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 valid to date in opc if you give an empty it will take the default date which is 71 12 2031 and when you browse an application like uh, when you uh, give oper command inside this panel command line you will get into this page where you will see the number of jobs in, inside it i told you earlier about the workstations these are the different workstations rlse sysg etc like you can have any workstation created with this but it can have only four letters um, usually the first and last workstations will be dummy workstations so that we can create uh, dependencies internal and external dependencies without impacting the jobs uh, and the jobs within uh, the between the first and last will be the actual executing jobs um, and you can see the internal and external predecessors here 
the difference between a database and uh, current plan is in current plan you can see both the predecessors and successors but in database you can see only the predecessor so this particular application has an external predecessor we are not sure what but if you have to check it you can check it from this option so the first job has an external predecessor you can give yes in front of it and after that the first option will be the predecessor option where you can uh, see whatever predecessors are available for this application um, so next is to add an application like from this page if you go to option two it will take you to sorry i think i messed up the document i prepared it in a hurry uh, yeah in option four you need to select option two that is to create an application this is the page you will see where you can create an application normally um, um, scheduling uh, team will perform this activities for creating an application inside a database where you have to give um, application ID text to identify the application or uh, like a kind of supporting test to say what this application does uh, whether it is an application or a group owner ID uh, owner IDs text like normally if an application team requests an application to be created uh, we can put the team's name uh, for example team's name or a particular person name who requested it and in text you can uh, mention a, a change a record number or a ticket a problem whatever it is and by default the priority is five but if you want to increase the priority of a particular application you can like uh, give up to nine or de for decreasing it you can give it to up to one and the status as you know it is active and pending that is the two options valid from date if you want to activate uh, an application after a few days let's say you have to uh, today you are creating the application and you have to activate it on uh, after three days like 10th you can give the valid from date from 10th so opc will not uh, consider that application even if it is an active state until the valid from date is current date um, okay so after creating applications you can uh, add jobs inside it like you need to give the workstation where the job should run operation number this operation number is very very essential uh, for identifying a job like opc identifies a job by the operation number in most of the places for example internal predecessor like this job the second job which i'm showing will have an internal predecessor of first job and the third job will have the internal predecessor of second job so which means second job will not run until the first job completes and third job would not run before the second job executes and completes fine that is what internal dependencies means internal predecessors is nothing but dependencies within an application and external dependencies or external predecessors is exactly similar but uh, it is from a different application internal same and external different application um you can give s and one to set predecessors if you have like uh, exhausted all these blanks here like you can add up to um, eight internal jobs but if you want to add more you can still add more it will an, an application will allow up to uh, 255 um, jobs to be added into it if you want more than that um, you will have to create a new application this is the page i was telling you about if you give one it will take you to the predecessors page where you can add an application you can add an application external application here or internal application here 
if you want to add an external application then you have to add the application name and the operation and its uh, workstation for example application a <coughs> and application b are inside the system the operation number 10 of application b needs to run after the operation number 99 of application a you can create a setup like this so this is application a you are giving the workstation you are giving the operation number as well as the application id it will automatically fetch the job name that's all if you come out then external dependency will be set for this 10 even though first and second job runs 10 will wait for this application the external application to complete before this get triggered <coughs> that's what uh, dependencies and predecessor setup means and okay coming to ett as i told you guys already uh, ett is nothing but um, even triggered it is not kind of scheduled inside opc and opc won't have much control on this jobs it is kind of a non opc job uh, even can be like um, file or uh, it can be an application which creates a file whatever it is like if there is a um, file entry inside the mainframe opc there is something called tracker and uh, planning tracker in opc uh, kind of subsystem it tracks all the events happening which is related to it uh, kind of ett or any other uh, events which are necessary for opc to track it will keep tracking it it will be an active starter task in mainframe and it will keep on tracking it when there is a file availability it will immediately trigger the respective application created for it this is the panel where you can create an uh, ett entry like uh, from a database yeah you need to go to option 7 and you will see this page where you can browse or modify an ett <coughs> let's say we have an uh, trigger this is the like this is the file name or the uh, event name which will be entering into the system or it which will be running inside the mainframe once that is triggered we need to uh, have this application uh, triggered automatically by opc mm, for example consider this as a file uh, a file entering into a mainframe and it has the data which needs to be processed by, by certain jobs within this application so once this has entered this application will get scheduled in uh, current plan and it will start running so one by one all the jobs will run the jobs will have the data which will be available in this application and it will create the outputs and that's how it gets processed and what is the uh, benefit of having an ett is for example if we are scheduling a, a, this particular same application inside a opc with a particular time like let's say 10 o'clock daily but this particular file or a triggering event will not come into the system daily it will come um, once all uh, once in every alternate days or it can come in a different timing like but until that particular time or date this application should not be running but if you schedule it in a particular time it will get triggered immediately once the uh, time comes so there won't be any control over it and without the data the application will get failed so to avoid all these things ett setup is created and so whenever the file comes application runs and for creating ett you need to know all this and this will be the most default option used 
ET is uh, like tells you the type of event triggered. It may be an external job like this or a special resource or kind of file. And JR will tell you the uh, give you the option to replace a job name like for a particular application the job external job uh, should be the first job of the application so when you have that uh, jr yes when this application is scheduled into the current plan the first job will be replaced by the job which is getting which is the triggering event mostly this will be in uh, like by uh, by default and the DR is nothing but the dependency resolution as we have already discussed about the dependencies It will if you give Y, it will consider the external dependencies So since it is Application level you don't have to worry about internal dependency. It will always consider internal dependencies But if you want the external dependencies to be considered this option should be Y and if you give N, it will not be uh, consider and there is one more option called P It will consider only the external predecessors and not the successes And coming to the last option is av availability status like If it is like it can be R or it can be N like if you have this uh, uh, Sorry, it can be yes or it can be no like if you have this um, availability status. Yes uh, Then it will act, uh, Add then uh, application every time when the file comes in Or when, every time when the job comes in and if you give it as a no Like it will uh, whenever it sees the availability as yes only then the application will be added into the plan and not all the time That that's all the stuffs about ETT Coming to run cycle as I've told you already if you have a calendar like a large calendar created for the entire year for all the applications on jobs running into the in the inside the system then you can only categorize the schedule on basis of a run cycle so from database from an application sorry if you give a run option it will take you inside the run cycle i'll show you where yeah here can you see here there is an option called run this will take you inside the run cycle of an application where you can actually schedule it this is the place where you actually schedule the application i think i have overrun yeah okay so if there is no run cycle you can create it or if there is already a run cycle you can modify it from the option list let's uh, let's not go into this further because it is like a very uh, large stuff we'll go to the next uh, page where you can modify an application yeah okay Okay, I'll tell you the basic of the run cycle and we'll go to the next stuff um, If you give the application name uh, In uh, let's see we are in option 3 List of op list option and you are giving an application name where you can see the uh, run cycle by giving uh, Run command in that in that uh, panel where we uh, where we saw the browsing details of an application you can see the particular run cycle of an uh, application here the name indicates the uh, Rule or period in which the application should run week indicates that the application is run uh, like scheduled to run every week in a particular time that is 1 p.m And the deadline is like it should complete before uh, 11 p.m. on the same day 
and this particular rule or period should be valid from this date in effect date just like application valid from and to rules inside application will also have valid from and to date like for example if you want a particular application to run for the next one week you can create it uh, you can set that using this in effect and out effect you need to create the first uh, in effect date as today's date and the out effect date as the last day of the week uh, sorry uh, next to the last day of the week where, when the application should stop executing these are the contents of the run cycle and run cycle will have something called um, type it is a rule exclusion offset and offset based will not f go further into it we'll just see what are the types and there is also something called free day rule by which you can uh, set if um, application is scheduled on a particular free day what it should do it should run or it should not run it should run on the previous work day of the free day or it should run off the next work day of the free day or it should run on the free day itself here it is mentioned as free day rule as three which means if the application is like if the application is scheduled on a, a holiday like a christmas holiday or a new year holiday the application can run on the same day so which means run on the free day but i want this application to run uh, if the uh, particular day is a holiday i don't want this application to run on the holiday i want it run before the holiday or after the holiday then you can set the options one or two respectively so opc will uh, like automatically moves the application one day prior or one day later according to your preference and within the run cycle you will this is the panel where you can uh, set up a run cycle it, it will be very simple like um, you need to select the options where the jobs needs to be scheduled in here if you see it has to be every monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday which is like work days of the week of that particular week it should run daily excluding uh, weekends that's all uh, you can see about the run cycle and uh, to verify a run cycle if once you have set up like this is a simple kind of run cycle if you have anything complicated then you want to know whether the run cycle which you created satisfies your purpose then you can give a command called gen days as you can see here that will show you the all the run days of that uh, rule like i think this is from a different uh, page as per the previous this rule it will run on all the uh, weekdays work days of uh, week of that particular uh, month or particular year as per the in effect and out effect date uh the red color shows that these are uh, free days or uh, holidays free days as per opc we can like say it is a holiday and this is the scheduled days the highlighted ones and uh, all other days are normal days in the calendar so i hope uh, i'm clear about the run cycle do you have any questions on this anyone i'm sure like it is like a pretty new topic uh, on opc but if you have any questions uh, stop me then and there or else i'll keep continuing with uh, the preparation okay after run cycle what you need to know about an application is operator instruction like applications will be um, requested by application team to process a set of file or something and when it fails the application team cannot be available like 24 bar 7 but operations or operators will be monitoring the system always so they want certain set of instructions to be given to the operator 
uh, for um, performing an operation like if an application or a job fails this can be restarted or you need to wait for a few minutes before restarting or you need to uh, call a particular person to work on it like that it's a set of instruction that is what operator instruction means and you can uh, set the operator instruction for each and every job or every application inside the opc from the database from uh, from application browsing an application oper you need to select a particular job where you need to give the operation uh, operator instruction and select option 7 and you can enter the uh, details in option 7 you will have a blank page just like a jcl page where you can uh, key in whatever uh, instructions we uh, you've been provided with for, by the application team okay good and okay this is like uh, adding the application and scheduling this from database will be done for a like a longer period like a permanent stuff but if you want to add an application inside and current plan as i said like current plan will have only the next 24 hours of jobs and that in the last minute or the last hour you've been asked like you, uh, a particular ad needs to be executed you need to use this option 5 modify current plan and you need to select option 1 which is addition you need to add an application to a current plan you need to go by this uh, this way and similar to uh, the other panel you just have to give the application name which is already available in the database and input arrival time which is nothing but the time when the application needs to be scheduled time and date once you've given the input arrival time and date deadline time and date it will uh, get scheduled it will show you if you give op it will show you the uh, jobs inside the application and the workstations or uh, operator uh, operation number um, I'll tell you what all these are even in uh, um, current plan you can edit or update workstation in the last minute you can update the operation numbers you can update the parallel servers duration option yes option t external successor external predecessor resources yes resources r1 r2 all these stuffs which are in red and even the job names you can modify other than this uh, other than this last column which is the status current status of the application you know uh, what is an uh, workstation which i've told you already and an operation number operation text is to define what the job means just like application description operation text is for a particular job job name is nothing but the job name actual job name duration you can specify an approximate duration but opc will automatically uh, fetch the actual duration on completion of the op uh, operation option yes is to uh, like tell if the application can run automatically when the time comes if you give no it will not run and it will wait until a manual uh, intervention is happening option t will tell if it is a time dependency or not if you have yes it will wait for the time if no once you added it inside the current plan irrespective of the input arrival the application will trigger immediately so this is an important option and external predecessor and successor you know that already uh, resources there is something called special resources um which is also used to control a job or an application run uh, if it is defined properly special resource can be anything like a file or um, a resource or a tape so if you want a application run when the tape is available you can set that you can create that using the help of special resources and status these are all the normal status which you can see uh, in the opc and you can also change the status like if it is mentioned a then the application is waiting for arrival w means wait and you can change it to c in the new column you can like just change the status 
as per your desire like if you don't want this application first job to run you can just change it to C so the status of the first job will change to C and the application will start start running from the second job the second job uh, status will automatically move to A this is these are all the current status and these are all the status which you can change A means uh, arrival ready like C complete D deleted E is for operation ended in error interrupted operation and R is similar to A s is started it is in execution undecided like status like opc head tracker has not tracked the application properly so it doesn't know what is the status of the application and it is w is waiting uh, asterisk is like for waiting for a predecessor or it may be waiting for a special resource or a workstation these are all the statuses available for um, job and you can also see what whether a, a job is in execution or not by uh, in uh, modify current plan option 5 by giving the application name option 5 you need to go to uh, option 2 uh, like 5.2 if you give the application name it will show you the status of the application 5.2 is to check the application status and in 5.2 three you can check the job status directly both are more or less similar panels this is the application name of operation text application text this is when the application has been scheduled and the current status is completed priority of the application is seven it is not part of a group and it is demanded d stands for uh, uh, opc dialog but we we consider this demanded like it has been added ad hoc directly in the current plan if it is uh, OPC schedule, the ad uh, additional function will be empty. Uh, and you can also browse the application to see all the status of the jobs within inside it and the latest start, workstation, where it run, and the operation number. And accordingly, you can uh, like see all the other options within the application. You can also uh, view the JCL of the application, uh, sorry, JCL of the job from this option. If you give yes, you will be taken into this, where you can give six to see the JCL. From 5.2, if you give browse, you can browse all the application details. And if you give modify, you can modify the application details and you can even edit the JCL. Mostly application programmers and developers won't have the access to modify the JCL inside the production current plan. So uh, it may be a schedulers or system support or operators who might be doing this on uh, request from application developers. And uh, yeah, as I said, if you give EM, uh, you can modify a particular application and browse you can just view the difference between is uh, if you have to just check a particular application status always use browse M is like uh, only to edit an application for accidental editing you can avoid this um, uh, you can use this browse to avoid accidental editing and inside modify if you give op you can give J and uh, all these other options to see JCL and you can edit if you want to uh, delete some steps you need to add some steps update the JCL fetch a new uh, JCL from a different member you can do all this from uh, uh, I have a question here yeah 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 uh, okay, uh, so the my requirement is uh, usually what happens uh, when you see the status of an application, it will be completed when all the jobs are completed, right? Uh, that means yeah. most of the times the, the return code will be zeros. So, yeah. but there is a requirement that uh, we need to uh, still complete the application uh, by having one of the last job as max is C4. So, okay. we'll have to configure that. Okay. So max is C4. If you if yeah. you have the last G, uh, last job with max is C4, then still the uh, uh, the job should be considered as uh, completed and uh, the application should get completed. Is that what you are asking? 
yes 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 yeah i i have the topic uh, ready i'll share you like in the next few pages there is something called highest redundancy code we need to set for that particular uh, particular job if you have set that highest redundancy code as four that uh, job even if it fails with uh, max uh, four the job will be uh, completed like marked completed by opc and the application will get complete i'll show you with the examples there okay sure sure thank you okay yeah um we've seen this jcl stuffs so going into okay if you want to uh, in the filter page you can also filter using in status like uh, the applications which are all in error state which are all in waiting state started state or um, unknown state i have created a screenshot with uh, uh, like the applications which are in error so if you see this particular application has been demanded and it is part of a group with priority nine but the status is in error due to some reasons so one of the job or multiple jobs have failed inside the application it needs to be uh, fixed so that if there is any dependencies like if there is any successes running behind this application it will not be uh, withhold okay until this is uh, not cleared the next application will not get triggered so from 5.2 these are all the options you will see in the panel one is to browse c is to like complete the um, application like if you do not want the application to run it is waiting but you do not want the application to run you can just complete the application and if that application is part of a group you cannot just complete an uh, application within a group you can either like remove it from the group and complete it or you can complete the entire group a group is kind of set of uh, application you can also delete an occurrence like d is for deleting an application it uh, like if you delete an application it will not be available in the current plan at all so no one can see the status of it or what has been done uh, what is the current status nothing can be seen if you delete it, the occurrence it is like purging a job from out of the spool and uh, delete occurrence group is uh, similar to uh, completing a group but it will remove the complete group modify you know that rerun the occurrence is like rerunning the application entire application one more time that is the use of rerun and w is waiting status and these are all the uh, other status of an application complete ended in error started uh, undecided and waiting priority you know that group if it is part of a group yes yeah. or else no Sorry and, to interrupt. Yeah. Oh, I have one question on the rerun. Uh, so what if in case of if you are creating a file in a job uh, while you are rerunning, you have to delete it and uh, uh, force a request for rerun, or it will automatically, you uh, know, uh, delete the existing file and uh, recreate it again the next time when it okay. turns. So you are telling like for a member, for a, a job, a particular job, right? For a job, uh, if there is an output okay. file, yeah. yeah. Okay, so if you have edited the production library and updated the member, JCL will be automatically fetched. But if you have it in an overlay library or in a, uh, other library, you can just update. I have shown you how to edit the JCL, right? You can modify the application, go inside the JCL, and you can edit the JCL. You can edit the JCL here, whatever you need to uh, do, and you can come out of it. And then you can rerun. It will fetch the the updates which you have made. Okay, okay. Suppose in case where we don't have uh, access to changes all the application IDs, we need to request for a team to uh, submit yeah, yeah. the job. That's how you can do it. If you don't have an ex access to a particular uh, function, then you need to approach the team who has access to do that. There would be like certain cases. Uh, customer wants the application team to be different from. Uh, the team who is uh, updating this uh, jobs and stuffs to uh, for their security and safety so in this in those uh, criteria they you uh, like application teams or you might not have access to the, do that so you need to approach the, the particular team to get it done is that uh, clear so what, 
Yeah, no, I understood. What was my question was usually, you see, just before in the JCL, right? We usually add a delete uh, IABR 14, right? Delete that data set okay. and okay. create. So yeah. why can't we add that in the JCL itself? It is, it's possible here. I, I still didn't uh, get you. Like, so, do you want okay. to add a particular step inside the JCL or? Yeah, step inside the JCL so that it will just make sure it got deleted before you try to create it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you can uh, you need to either add it in the member or you need to take the help of the uh, Operators or schedulers whoever has access to it to add uh, add that particular step inside the JC I understood that what I'm saying is make it uh, no avoiding the manual intervention Just creating mm -hmm. the entire AD and JCL itself. I was saying mm -hmm. can we add a delete step before try to create it in a JCL itself Is it allowed in OPC? Uh, yeah, uh, there is certain stuffs which you can control using the JCL like um, you can delete a particular job But uh, you need to learn uh, something called OCL Object, uh, no, no, no. Uh, Not a delete job uh, one thing, just let me clarify here I'm I'm okay. trying to understand the deleting of file in a JCL before you try to create it using IMDR yeah, yeah, you, can, you, you can you can use that uh, option inside JCL yeah, because in control M we have we do have that option, uh, but I'm not yeah, sure. You can, you, you can you can have that uh, options uh, added in the JCL. That's fine. Oh, okay. okay. Well, most of the all the uh, JCLs which you have used in control M can be used here as well. Like all the functions you you have done in using control M, you can be done here as well using JCL. Yeah, yeah, the reason is why I'm trying to say is suppose uh, if it's trying to delete the file, but it doesn't exist So it may saying that resource not exist some kind of error. I mean, that's the reason yeah, I'm yeah asking. I understand that I understand okay. but you can absolutely do that. That's that won't be a problem Okay Yeah, thank you Okay, yeah uh, We have seen all this and Yeah as I said earlier, you can just restart or change the status from here as well inside the jobs like R to restart C to force complete a particular job, not the entire application, just a particular job. You can give R in front of this E to just restart this particular uh, job as well from 5.2. And uh, someone asked me about the max CC code. Uh, this is the place where you can update the maximum return code of a particular job in 1.4.3 if you give the um, in database if you give the application name and if you access the particular job and if you give s in front of the job you will get this um, option called automatic options option number four where you will see this highest return code as you asked uh, I didn't get his name like as he asked uh, the he wants four as the highest redundant code So if you give four OPC will not consider the job to be an error job even if it fails with uh, uh, max CC four um, It will like uh, complete and the application will get uh, completed and the successes will get triggered and uh, That's all for uh, now like these are all the basic OPC stuffs an application developer or an operator should know. If you like decide you have to further pursue, you'll have to uh, dig in further for uh, more of these functions. I'll, I'll uh, give you guys uh, like some time to ask if you have any questions before we wind up.